I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, so you've done a lot of work in social behavior and like social media, right? And you're, you're studying the patterns and the implications of all of it, right? So if you had to make a social media app today, how would you make it? You mean the process I would use to make it? Like, or... like what would be your guiding principles be? My guiding principles. Um, so I started out, you know, caring a lot more about the technology. I used to be an electrical engineer. Right. Well, I guess I, I still am kind of, but my undergrad degree was in electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. And there, you know, I focused a little bit more on the technology. Um, then I moved towards HCI and I focused more on the human. Um, and then I moved towards what I would argue is more community centered computing. So I would focus on the community, like how you would make a tool that allows for cohesive community interaction where people can, where people can have shared values. Um, so one of the challenges, I mean, that we see with interfaces today um, is that they're changing in scale and speed in ways that we're just not used to. I mean, if you think about it, the telegraph is social media, the telephone is social media, um, the telegraph is also social media, smoke screens. Right. Um, well, I think I mentioned the telegraph, the telegraph, the telephone, like smoke screens are social media. Um, it's like, there's so many ways to communicate. And I would argue that you want people to be able to have a conversation um, where they understand the norms in the conversation and where they can know what they're responding to. So certain things you need in a channel, you need in a channel. One, you need the ability to um, know when it's your turn to speak or have a channel to be able to speak. Um, you have to have a channel for some form of correction. So for example, if I say something and you look really confused, um, I can, I can like go into repair mode and see that you misunderstood what I said, misunderstood what I said and try to correct it. Mm -hmm. Um, you need that in a, an online channel too, even when you can't see the person's face. Right. Um, so I would argue those are some of the things that I would value. Um, but ultimately, I could predict anything I want and I won't know how people will, will use it. And so you need to have a process in place by which you user test something before you release it to a crowd. And you need to user test it with small groups of people and then bigger groups of people and then groups of people that are different from you. Um, one of the biggest mistakes I see people make is, you know, test out a new tool with some of their best friends or some people down the hall, um, because then you only get a sense of how a very select group of people will use it, probably very similar in, you know, demographics. And ultimately, we are a big, you know, diverse community, mm -hmm. and we need to see how different groups of people will use tools, not and not just designed for us, but designed for other communities as well. So that's the, that's, I would say, the standard framework. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but what would you base the app on? Like, what would the idea be? Like, if, like for example, Instagram is like you're sharing photos, videos, and that's like one of the ways to communicate your life or like how you're interacting with others. Right. Um, TikTok is more where you have short, short form videos and it's like fast, like short mm -hmm. attention based content um, on your social media app what would the product be like? Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. So one, one thing I want to preface is that a lot of these ideas are on like Instagram and, um, and Snapchat and all of those things. All of these things have been like ideas people have had before, mm -hmm. um, but people actually created companies around them. Um, and it's, it's the people that created the companies around these ideas that, you know, that made that company. There's lots of these smaller things around, you know, prior to that. Um, I actually value at the moment, and, and these things change, I value sort of smaller segments of communication where you have smaller groups of people mm -hmm. that might um, connect. I don't think it's just about the photograph. I don't think it's just about the text. I think right. a lot of it is how you start forming the communities to begin with and how you reach people 
and then how you help create norms for how they use them. So, I mean, if you think about, if you think about Twitter, for example, the idea of retweeting, that was grassroots. That was people creating that. And then the company saw that and made it part of the actual product itself. Um, and so I would create a tool for smaller groups of people. Um, and then I would work with them. Like I wouldn't release it just on the fly and see what happens. Um, I would see what they might want. And I would be really curious, like to create something maybe very specifically for a group of people, um, as opposed to something that's one size fits all to be used for everyone. And I would really love to have some type of toolkit where maybe I have some framework and some, some basic infrastructure and let the communities actually fine tune it for what they need. Um, this idea of personalizing for your group set of values, for your group's needs, I think is something that is kind of missing in this one size fits all system that we have today. Um, and people are trying to appropriate what we have today already, and, and they've done that historically. Um, like they have different moderating principles. Um, but what if they could also have something where they could highlight, like, let's say just hypothetically, I'm creating, I'm, I, my family happens to be Greek. Um, and let's say we want to have something from, you know, my, my parents' village. Um, there are certain things that we commemorate, certain holidays, there are certain customs. Um, if there was a way to incorporate that into the site um, and give it its own personal identity, you know, that would be something that would unite the people a little bit more and hopefully offer something mm -hmm. that they might not get otherwise. I also want to, I would want to make sure that the site did not take away from the opportunity for face-to-face -face interaction. So for example, one thing we see a lot is, you know, you make tools where you can send a message or, you know, look at a video of a person and you're like, well, because I sent the message and they're okay, it means I don't have to go there and visit. Um, I think that a lot of the social media is great to connect people, especially when people are remote. Um, but I get frustrated when I see things that, where I otherwise might have just walked over to a house just stop by for a cup of coffee. Um, and you see this a lot with the elderly. For example, people put in cameras. Um, you have a busy day at work. You can see that somebody's okay. Why bother to go visit? Um, I think this idea of finding a way to prioritize certain types of interaction um, and maybe letting the technology say, look, you know, why not visit? Uh, why not have a face-to-face, -face, you know, encounter as opposed to just communicating online? Um, I think that's something that we very much need today and we're not getting with some of today's um, social media infrastructures. But how would you make it so that people can have those face-to-face -face interactions? How, how would you integrate it with the app? So that's I mean, my entire area of research is called human computer interaction. I mean, what you just described is something that would take, you know, a significant amount of time to do. Right. I mean, you'd start by making prototypes of a system. You'd see what people do with a prototype and you move on from there. I mean, the biggest mistake you could make is design it from scratch from beginning to now and then see what people do. Because by that point, you're too invested in what you've built to make the changes that you needed to have made like months ago. Hmm. So part of this process is is knowing that you can't decide you can't design the full thing from scratch. So patience is a huge part of it too. Right. Um, so human computer interaction, community computer interaction, involves an element of participatory design where you have to work with the people to create it. A lot of what you see with I, I can't say all because I don't know how all of these systems that we use today were created, but were designed by somebody that that possibly thought, this is how I would like to communicate with somebody, hmm. so I'm going to have the whole world communicate this way. Right. And in many ways, like designing it from scratch like that would be against many of the principles that, um, that we need for community computing.